Hi everyone, welcome to part 2. Okay, Daga has just played knight 7 c6, which as I said is one of many possible defences in this position. And Fisher had clearly worked on this gambit at length, because he goes into great detail in his book about the various possibilities arising from different defensive moves. For example, if instead knight 5 c6, which seems okay, now comes knight g5, threatens bishop h5 check and a very dangerous attack black is now forced to castle if instead h6 it's a bad blunder now comes bishop h5 check forces g6 now comes knight takes e6 and white is winning um, black's best bet here is the queen is attacked and knight g7 check is also threatened so um Best play goes bishop takes e6, now rook takes e6, and after g takes h5, which is the best that black has, not queen takes h5 check, but queen takes d5, and white's advantage has grown to three pawns, so it's game over for black here. So we'll go back a few moves now to where we saw black having to castle instead of suffering that big attack. So he castles, and now the right move for white to maintain the pressure is bishop g4. There's pressure here on e6, and now there's reasonable compensation for the pawn. And black's only move to retain any advantage is queen f4, which forks the knight and the f2 pawn. And now Fisher gives bishop takes e6 check as best play. It forces bishop takes e6, and now knight takes e6 allows queen takes f2 check but the depth of Fisher's preparation and un understanding is clear here because after king h1 best play goes rook f5 and now rook e2 forcing the queen back queen h4 is best square and after knight d4 rook h5 is best if instead knight takes d4 white wins a piece with bishop takes e7 so uh, rook h5 is best. Now knight f3 is uh, attacking the queen, and the queen is tied to defending the knight here at e7. So f6 is the only square. But now comes queen e1, adding another attacker. And that again forces rook e8. If the knight moves instead, then rook e8 check is winning. So after rook takes e8, queen takes e8 check is going to pick up the rook here on h5. So uh, rook e8 is forced, now comes rook e6, again forcing queen f7, now queen e2, threatening rook e1, and also eyeing this uh, loose rook here. And uh, this pin on the e7 knight is completely paralyzing black's play, and now white is gaining a significant advantage, more than enough for the sacrifice pawn. Rook h6 is the correct move here, hoping to exchange rooks. Now rook e3 followed up with rook e1 is winning for white. And this variation clearly illustrates some of the dangers of Fisher's idea with sacrificing a pawn in the opening. He goes into other various defensive possibilities and how they are refuted too, but I think we've probably spent enough time at this juncture for now. Okay, so back to the game continuation anyway, which is knight 7 c6, which Daga has just played. And uh, Fisher continued with knight takes e5. And according to Fritz, he already has a total compensation for the pawn after knight takes e5. f4, knight c6, and bishop g4, which adds pressure to e6 and just about forces the move that Darker played, which was the castle queenside. And uh, taking on f4 uh, wasn't good. Um, Fisher wins the pawn back here now, perfectly willing to go into a bishop versus knight middle game, which was one of his favourite setups. He's not worried about his dodgy pawn structure because he's confident in the knowledge that his native ability will be enough to win the game. Play continued with bishop takes e6, and now bishop takes e6, which is probably a small inaccuracy from Daga. Better was rook h8, according to Fritz. So bishop takes e6, rook takes e6, now rook d7, and f5 from Fisher, which 
is played in order to continue with F6 and uh, gains a strong grip on the F file. If instead Queen F3, now comes Knight D8, Rook E5, and Queen C6, which Fisher believed equalized for Black. So uh, F5, and now Knight D8 in order to evict the Rook. So Rook E3. And Daga now continued with Queen F4, prompting Fisher to comment that he was defending with vigor. And this forks the Rook and the F-pawn, so Rook F3 is logical. And now Queen E4, which is a strong central square for the Queen, and Daga is clearly vying for E-file control. If uh, Queen E1 now, then Rook E8. However, playing Queen E4 has the disadvantage of cutting the Black Queen off from the Queen side, which uh, Fisher was quick to spot and take advantage of. A5 is what he played next, commencing operations against the Black King. And Daga must have been feeling the pressure because here he plays a weak move with Knight C6, which allowed Fisher to open the A file decisively. Correct, according to Fisher, was b5 with an equal game. Playing instead b takes a5 achieves little after bishop c5, and the open b file is going to be um, just as dangerous as the a file proves to be. So, Daga has just played knight c6, so now comes a takes b6, a takes b6, and here Fisher targets the weakness he's created, the b pawn with queen b1 and suddenly white is gaining a big advantage Daga played the correct defense with king c7 um, if instead he played king b7 now bishop c5 wins also possible was rook b7 but now f6 is very strong after g takes f6 and rook takes f6 with very uncomfortable pressure especially now black is forced to retreat his knight Okay, so back to the game continuation anyway, where it's time to spot the winning move after king c7. Um, if you want to try and spot the winning move, it's white to play and win, then uh, stop the video now. Bishop c1 is the move, and the reason it's winning is because there's no satisfactory defense to the threat of bishop f4 check, and Fritz agrees that white now has a big advantage. Knight e5 loses tactically to rook e3, followed up with queen b5. And Daga's best shot was probably to give up the exchange with rook d6, but against someone like Fischer, all that's going to do is prolong the agony. Daga tried queen e1 check, which picks up the c pawn after rook f1 and queen takes c3. But now comes bishop f4 check, and black is in dire straits. Again, he should give up the exchange here with the rook d6. And uh, knight e5 is problematic because of queen b5, which uh, threatens rook a7 check, which is going to win the d7 rook. Daga played king b7 but after queen b5 he'd had enough and quite reasonably resigned. Fritz gives an evaluation of close to five pawns advantage here for white so it's a winning position and a winning attack. The threat of course is queen a6 which is mate and the king can't run away because it's tied to defense to uh, defending the knight which also means Daga is unable to challenge white's a file control with rook a8 or simply rook takes a8, king takes a8, queen takes c6 check and uh, you know it's big trouble um, and as Fisher indicated you know the black queen is unable to come back and help defend after getting stranded away from the uh, action in the queen side during the middle game which was a decisive factor, as well as Daga allowing Fischer to open the A-file, which was the strongest element of the attack. So it was a very nice game from Fischer to start the new series. I hope you enjoyed it, and please leave any comments or thoughts. Thanks very much.